So in this video I will talk about uh, two tools. One is the uh, sequencer and the other one will be the scanner. Let's start with the sequencer. The sequencer is essentially a tool to do uh, mathematical analysis of entropy. What you want to find out here is how random something is. By something I mean uh, usually cookies or session tokens or anything what you usually use in your application as a random string. What the sequencer can do for you is to send requests automatically to, to collect these uh, tokens and then run a bunch of uh, mathematical analysis on them to find out uh, how good the entropy was to generate these, these uh, random values. And by that, uh, show you how random they really are. Uh, this, these tests could be good to you when you have like a, a suspicion that, that the cookies what you're receiving are not really random. So they do change, they look random, but you have a feeling that they are, they probably aren't. And you want to test them because if they are not random, then you might find a way to forecast them and, and uh, generate session cookies for yourself. And that's, uh, that's awesome if you, can, if you can do that. So let's quickly see how this really works. So this is the, this is the main, main sequencer page. And what you want to do is uh, find the request, which, uh, which you can test here. And with that, you can collect these tokens, what you want to test. So we are going back, gonna go back to, to the web code. So I'm going to restart the, the browser to have a clean environment. And reload this page. Guest, guest. And now let's see here in verb what happened exactly. So you see, at the, when we send the first requ request, we don't have any cookies, uh, and in response, we don't get anything. But in the second request, uh, this is the authorization. So we, we add the authorization code or the username password. And then in the response, uh, we get a set cookie parameter, a set cookie uh, header. And, uh, and what we want to use the sequencer for is to figure out whether this value here is random or not. And for that, we have to send this request as many times as we can to have a list of these session cookies to be able to run the se sequencer on them. So we say send to sequencer. And then we have this one request here in the sequencer. Uh, so the value what you want to test is going to be in the response. So you have various options how you want to choose what part of the response you want to uh, test. So you can choose here that it's going to be a cookie. So Burp is looking for this uh, set cookie header and al allows you to choose one of these cookies. Since we have only one cookie, we can only choose the J session ID there. Also, you can use uh, form fields, but that's also not that interesting now. Um, that could be interesting for you if you are uh, if there is a, a cross-site request for jury protections, because usually a good way to protect against cross-site sc uh, scripting forgery is to put a random cross-site scripting token in every uh, form as a hidden parameter or a hidden input. And here with the form field, you could choose that input and test whether these uh, these cross-site request forgery tokens are always new and always random. Because if they are not random, then uh, 
you could be able to generate and then like fake this uh, or or bypass the cross site request forgery and protection. And the custom location I show you, that's actually a pretty cool tool. Uh, you have the response here and you can either put here like um, regular expressions or things like that. But what I really like is that you can come here and select what you want. And uh, as you can see, Burp automatically generated these expressions for you to, to mark for you which part you want to look at. This is really useful when the token is something which you cannot really define well. So like not a cookie or not an input field, it's just like one part of the, uh, the web page, the response what you get. And with this tool, you can very well define what you, are, you want to look for, and it's pretty easy. Uh, so there is not too, so you don't really have to write uh, real uh, regular expressions by yourself. So, but we can just use here the cookie now. There is some speed options here, which I'm not going to change now. I'm going to just say uh, start live capture. And then as you can see, here are the requests sent and the tokens collected. You can, you can use this auto analyze, which will do an, uh, do this mathematical analysis after like every hundred uh, tokens or something like that. Or, and then you can see how it changes in time, or you can just uh, stop it and wait for uh, some time. I usually wait for like a thousand tokens at least. Uh, sometimes the application is really slow and then uh, then it's not possible, but the more uh, tokens you have, the better it is because then the, the analysis will be more accurate. As you can see, it started to slow down. So actually I will uh, stop it. Yes. And do an analyze now. I'm not gonna explain you everything on this page because usually what I'm looking at is this line here, which is the overall quality of randomness is excellent. You could look through all these data, all the uh, diagrams. Burp really does quite a few tests, which might be interesting for you if you want to know a lot about randomness and how you how you analyze randomness, but I usually don't do that. For me, this is fine that it says excellent, and right now it's a JSON ID, so it's something basic from from uh, Tomcat. So actually, I would I could have said that I trust the JSON ID that is that is good. But if that's something what you don't know the token, then uh, then. It's always worth to, to check it with this tool. What happens when it says it's bad? Then I suggest you to, to try to figure out what's the problem with it. Try to figure out whether, whether it's a, a hash or it's put together from, um, from different hashes or different parts, whether it's base64. You can try a few things there. You can say like copy tokens and then put it in text editor or something. And sometimes even if like, if you put it in a text editor, you will see that, that the first five characters or something are always the same. It's like a good hint that, that something separate and, and uh, the rest is always changing. That, that might mean that for instance, the first part is like some kind of encoded way of your of your username and the rest might be random, but that could be also some something other like at the time or something like that encoded. And then you could try to, to, to crack the tokens and try to generate these tokens yourself. 
if you would be able to do that, like to do it for a session token, that would be awesome because you could then just, instead of logging in, you could just create a session token for for yourself and then use it to go to the server. That would be really good. And yeah, that's about it, uh, about the sequ sequencer. It's a really nice tool. It's good for uh, quick tests, but it's, uh, it's something really simple. It tests randomness, that's all. Now the other is uh, the scanner, which as you can see here, it's not part of the free edition, but the reason I'm talking about it, it is because, because I think if you wanna do pen testing professionally, then you will get to the point pretty, uh, really quickly when you wanna buy Burp Suite because it's uh, it's not an expensive thing. Uh, so basically your first pen test will pay for it. So I will just introduce it quickly. This is a, a, a really general uh, vulnerability scanner. If you use other vulnerability scanners, then you know the concept. The good thing is that it's in, that it's uh, it's built in into Burp, so you don't have to start new tools. You can just use it here in Burp, and it's pretty quick. It scans the request and responses, what goes through the proxy. That's the passive scanning. So, like, it will tell you if it saw something interesting for you, or you can do active scanning uh, either together with the spidering or as, as here on the picture, you can send the request to the scanner to do an active scan on them. And that means that the, the scanner will start to fuzz the different parameters in the request and look at the, uh, look at the responses and like try to, actually it's sometimes pretty good. It's good to find simpler process scripting, like reflected, reflected process, process scripting. Uh, it usually works out. It can also find you uh, SQL injections. So for instance, when I'm looking for a SQL injection, I I always send a, send a request to the scanner, even if I start working with the re request and the intruder on, or in the repeater uh, manually. But I will always say to, to do an active scan. And if you're lucky, then, then the scanner will find you the problem and then it saves time. And if you're not lucky, then you just had your shot and then you try to find the problem manually. It also find, uh, can find you like this uh, low hanging fruits, which are not really, um, not really serious vulnerabilities, but you have to put them in the report like uh, um, SSL problems or information leakage, like uh, the session token is in the URL or the password is in response and things like that, which are for us pen testers, it's not really interesting, but at the end of the day, you have to put it in the report because it's still a security problem. And so what I do, I have all my findings at, a, at the end of a penetration test, but I always come back to the scanner and, and, and check it whether, whether there is something which I might have seen, but wasn't that interesting that I went into it. Uh, but I still need to put it in the report. So that's about the scanner. If you decide to purchase uh, Burp Suite, then give it a try. Uh, it can be a good help for you and it's not difficult to use. All right. Uh, see you later.